Hey everybody, welcome in to another edition of the Inside Nebraska podcast and another edition of Rapid Recap. I'm Zach Carpenter, he's Greg Smith, our senior recruiting analyst at Inside Nebraska. And uh, Greg, we had the latest um, uh, media availability press conference today with Garrett McGuire, Nebraska's wide receivers coach and Nebraska tight ends coach, Bob Wager. Uh, Just about 10 to 12, 13 minutes or so for each uh, each coach up here at the at the podium. What, what were your overall impressions and takeaways? Yeah, first of all, I, today was uh, going to be an interesting day for me because these were two of the assistants that I was most looking forward to hearing from, um, and for kind of different reasons, but similar reasons, right? They both share kind of that Texas connection, um, and then also you have both of them taking a path to Nebraska that's a little bit unique and a little mm-hmm. bit is probably underselling it with Wager, which I feel like this isn't even talked about enough. With Wager making the jump straight from a high school coach, um, even as good as he was down at Arlington Martin, to being a full-time uh, assistant coach in the Big Ten, and then McGuire going from a really kind of an assistant assistant coach in the, in the NFL and not having really much of any college experience um, or none um, to being a, a Big Ten wide receivers coach. So I thought that there would be a lot of interesting things that came from the day, um, and there were some things. And I think so. My overall kind of impressions of both of them were they were both impressive in their own way, right? Because I think that the thing Things that you had heard about Bob Wager kind of leading into today or as we've kind of like heard about him and how impressive he is he opened up the thing by kind of walking around and shaking hands with everybody in the room like in the first you, no one can see this behind where the camera is but the first two rows over here of where we all sit um, to ask questions he walked around and introduced himself and got the name of each person like one by one that was kind of a unique touch um, to that and then flipping it over to McGuire I think the big thing obviously with him being so inexperienced is you were wondering how he kind of handle himself but I thought that he did well he answered all of the questions um, and gave some good answers yeah do you think that's a Bob Vance Vance refrigeration from the <laughs> office situation where he went around and says first and last name to everybody and remembered everybody's name I will be curious if he remembered everybody <laughs> that if he did say his name each time as if we did not know who he was which has kind of been a weird like not weird but it's been a thing that all of the assistants I think almost all of them have said hey you know nice to meet you I'm Ed Foley and like we know who you are coach. <laughs> right. like, it's okay so I was gonna say maybe they're, they're not used to the sort of the celebrity of being a Probably being a Nebraska not. coach, even <laughs> as a position coach here, uh, many celebrity around here. But yeah, yeah, I mean, you talked about sort of um, their two paths to Nebraska, and I, what I found interesting was the dichotomy of those two guys coming up, mm-hmm. taking the podium on the same day. You had the old bull and the young calf, right? <laughs> right. And you had Bob Wager, 52 years old, who's been coaching for he's entering his 31st year in mm-hmm. coaching. He started out. Um, 1993 so he's entering his 30th year in coaching um, and 24 as a high school head coach and then you have Garrett McGuire who is 24 years right. old um, who Bob Wager has been coaching McGuire longer or been coaching high school uh, been coaching football longer than McGuire's been alive and uh, but had been a high school coach for the same amount of years so um, it's interesting just seeing the two pathways and seeing the two um, not necessarily like the differences of personalities, but just thinking about the way the two uh, divergent paths, and but they all lead to Nebraska. And like you said, um, uh, McGuire, two years in the NFL, mm-hmm. two years as a Carolina Panthers um, assistant coach. That's the only experience on his right. official resume. But he was asked about the youth, how his youth and experience in the coaching industry, which. It has taken center stage, obviously, with any conversation you have about McGuire at this standpoint. I mean, he's only been on the job about a month. Um, But he did answer some of those questions. He talked about, um, I mean, his dad's obviously Joey McGuire, longtime legendary high school football head coach in in Texas, and then now the Texas Tech head coach. And sort of learning from him, he said, since since second grade, I've known that I was going to be going into the coaching industry in third and fourth grade. He's writing up plays and grinding through film with his dad That's sleeping great. in his dad's office on the couch and whatnot. But just some of the ways that he answered those questions, what did you take away from from his answers to those youth yeah, concerns? It, it's clear that like he had thought about this a little bit. Like it, He knew that it would come up in some way, shape, or form about his age, and he was prepared for that. Um, we had somebody joke um, on our insider's board that he should have like walked in with a juice box. It was kind of a joke <laughs> just to <laughs> kind of loosen things up and see he didn't go that far. Um, but you could tell that he was comfortable asking those, answering those questions. And I think that one of the things to me that struck me about uh, Garrett McGuire today is he was ready with kind of like his bona fides as to how he became 
like or how he got where he is today. He talked a lot about the coaches that have poured into him. He, obviously, his dad was a big influence in his coaching life, but then also he talked about Coach Rule and how much he, like of an honor it was to even meet him the first time and how they've gotten to know each other and how Coach Rule and his dad are the two kind of huge coaching influences in his life. Then he spoke about a number of different guys at the NFL level um, that have helped prepare him for this moment as well. Like He does have an impressive group of coaches that he's learned under. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it's just hard for us to know kind of how how that will then translate to his at his current job um, but we'll see that soon enough yeah see that's the thing is we're so early in this yeah in this whole it's, deal. it's, so it's the first second week of february now and he hasn't had to answer any questions of all right well how do you um how are you going to go about if a receiver's not happy with uh with his snaps <laughs> right. and his place in the rotation like how are you going to sort of calm the flames there, like what if, really if he starts talking about, like, it, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> like he starts talking that. about, um, if a player starts talking about potential transfer because he is unhappy, like j just mm -hmm. all those sorts of things. It's, it's like those questions will be answered in time with what he does, but right. at this point it's, I think it's justified to ask, all right, well, you're not experienced really with your own room. Right. You're not experienced yet. So that, that will come uh, with time. But like you said, he has, uh, he has those credentials from, different guys that he's learned from um, and same with same with Bob Wager and they both like you you talked about there's the two connections uh, the the three connections one like the uh, diverse age ranges yeah. and experience <laughs> ranges that we just uh, hit on and then Joey McGuire obviously Gary McGuire's dad and uh, someone who Bob Wager is very close and connected with right. and then the Texas connection is yeah. something that was very a very big talking point today because, I mean, Nebraska, everyone watching and listening to this uh, who's a Nebraska fan knows that when they were in the Big 12, they had a very strong, consistent recruiting presence in Texas. Once they went to the Big 10, that pretty much got eradicated almost immediately. And um, I think it had only been two Texas players signed in, like, in the previous three, four combined mm -hmm. classes, something along those lines. And this year, in 2023, it was six signees. And it looks like that's going to be established for years to come but they both talked about it at length, Wager more so than yeah. McGuire, but they both talked about those connections of trying to bring Texas back in the Nebraska recruiting landscape. Yeah, and they, did, and they talked about Wager, talked about something that we kind of knew because we saw it during the contact period was, you know, he was out in Dallas, Fort Worth and kind of that area a lot during the contact period. There were coaches in Waco. Um, I know that Matt Rule and Evan Cooper were out there. Um, coaches down in Houston, Terrence Knight and spent a lot of time mm -hmm. down in Houston um, during the contact period as well. And I think both of them, I feel like, mentioned Dr. Susan Elza as well as somebody mm -hmm. who can help to open up doors and continue to garner respect um, down in Texas with the high school. So with the High School Coaches Association as well. Um, and so those Texas, like you said, it's not going away. Like I would, I would say at this point, I would set the number at over on the six and them hitting six again signees for the 24 class. I think they're gonna do more than that with a full recruiting cycle. But one other thing that I, def I definitely wanted to mention too, that I did find in common with those two guys was they talked about leadership and getting to know their players. I mean, like mm -hmm. a, a, a couple of things though that you've also heard from basically Everyone. every coach <laughs> yeah. um, here and it, all, it manifests itself in different ways like Garrett McGuire dropped a Nick Saban quote um, about players and having to know that they that you're for them and you care for them before they can go out and perform for you um, you know Bob Wager also talked about you know getting to know the guys and if he only teaches them X's and O's and how to block and, and catch balls that he's failed them that he needs to teach them also how to be good husbands and good fathers down the road so that that is a common thread not just with these two guys that we heard from today but also really with the staff we heard a lot about building those connections and you again see another example of why it is that you know players and coaches have such a strong affinity and loyalty towards Matt Rule because this is the type of um, environment that they create. Yeah I mean I'm glad you hit on that because it's been the same uh, message the same refrain from Matt Rule on down when we've mm -hmm. had Satterfield, Ed Foley um, and, and the rest of the rest of the coaches is anytime you ask about personnel it's pretty. It's a sidestep of the question because they they have all said um, to a man, we don't we're not familiar enough with the with the players yet. It, just as far as like the X's and O's right. schematic standpoint, what they bring to the team, which I mean, they obviously do have a, a good feel film. from <laughs> watching tape, <laughs> yeah. last year's tape, game film, and practice, uh, practice film. film. Yeah. Matt yep. Rule has mentioned that a couple times. Yeah. Yep. I mean, so they they do have a good feel, but like until until they uh, sort of get their hands on them and uh, get to 
coach with uh, coach them and teach them and learn from them like yeah. we've uh, talked about so often um, during once spring practice actually starts in March right. then um, I think they just it's more of a comfort thing of we don't want to talk we don't want to really talk about the personnel until we have an actual chance to get uh, to work with them hand in hand on the field so uh, I think we'll, we might have Two more assistants maybe, uh, maybe available at press conferences over the next couple of weeks, potentially. Not sure on that, but um, it almost rounded out the entire staff. Yeah, um, and uh, Greg, Greg will be taking a vacation um, here. Very well, <laughs> very, very, very well earned vacation, yeah. I want to add. Um, but you might not be here, so I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit. You might not okay. be here for the next media availability, but it, assuming that we get rule and then we'll have had rule and then all 10 assistants mm -hmm. um, before the start of spring ball what's sort of one overall takeaway from this past month of, of talking and meeting with these coaches man they're all speaking the same language um, that no matter like if they're coming from Carolina or they were with rule at Temple or Baylor or if they were pulled from somewhere else like Tony White you know even when you're hearing from Tony White you didn't feel like he was like an outcast or anything they all sound like they've been in the same meetings um, and that they're pulling in the same direction which I think is a great thing to, um, right away to notice but also it goes to show like to me kind of what you saw on the recruiting trail and how they were able to do so well with that and hit the ground running there is because everyone's on the same page like that that has really struck me uh, throughout this process yeah and that's something we had talked about um, I mean today and a couple other times mm -hmm. it's just like that that shared vision this the shared message because at, at the high the high level programs that do this thing mm -hmm. well yep. they have similar uh, they have similar uh, thing where the same message is being shared and over the past previous couple of years under previous regime here yeah. didn't necessarily see that all the time and now it's been a it's been a change and I mean just the thought that popped in my mind as you were saying that is I wonder if like a small factor or maybe a big factor is the fact of something that Ed Foley and Terrence Knight had talked about is how close-knit the staff is off the field. Right, that they're spending time together off the field. It was mentioned again, mm -hmm. uh, Garrett McGuire mentioned again today about his favorite person like in the building is Terrence Knight and son, <laughs> and he wants to go watch him play basketball. So that time spent away and in foot, around football is, is helping. It does know? breed success. I mean, I actually am a true believer in that. Mm -hmm. and, um, I mean, I just think that if you can if you can bring that together off the field i mean you see you hear about all the the some of the best college teams at least mm -hmm. maybe maybe not necessarily the pro level but the best high school and college teams most successful ones the they're you always hear these stories about mm -hmm. how they are how they have chemistry off the field and how they're uh close-knit or at least have that comfortability and um, chemistry. It seems like, I mean, in the early stages here, it seems like the this Nebraska staff is mm -hmm. is built very much the same way. But um, before we get out of here, anything else to add? Why? I don't think so. I think, uh, I think we, we covered, covered it. All, right? it. We, we covered a good amount of it. Uh, now that you've mentioned the vacation, I'm like, now I'm back to thinking about that. <laughs> right so now you're gotta, vacation. That's great. Now, <laughs> yes, more vacation. I got one more. I got a story to file. Yeah, more, you guys. You guys have been. You and your wife have been playing this for a while, though. Yes. This was uh, back when um, you, you target February yeah, I did. and July. You, any college football uh, writer, media writer, mm -hmm. reporter will target February and July as. Mm -hmm. All right, when you're talking to your wife, your spouse, girlfriend, um, partner, whatever, um, that, all right, where are the, what are the areas where we can go on a vacation? Yeah, it's like those are the right, time. February and July. Those are when we, uh, when we have some downtime. So you'll be enjoying that downtime. Um, and we'll be continuing to grind away here <laughs> inside Nebraska staff. All the Enjoy. rest of us peasants are uh, working overtime over here. That's okay. No, but it's obviously very, <laughs> very well deserved for you um, and uh, and Steve Marek who's also uh, yes. who's made the announcement so he wouldn't mind uh, me sharing he um, him and his wife just had a baby girl so he'll be having some time off too and then it's back into the grind of March and spring ball and spring so ball he'll be, will be here, here. He'll, be here <laughs> he'll be here before uh, before you know it so we'll be uh, grinding away with content for this uh, YouTube channel inside Nebraska YouTube channel please like and subscribe to this video and uh, still got plenty of written content at uh, Inside Nebraska, nebraska.rivals.com. So make sure you subscribe to that as well. For Greg Smith, I'm Zach Carpenter, and we'll catch you guys again next time.